live on Newsnight. This is AIM Agenda with me now, Liberal frontbencher Senator Scott Bryan and Labor MP Michelle Rowland. Uh, Michelle Rowland, first to you, you heard what Richard Miles had to say there. He says you've got to choose your fights carefully in opposition, recognise Tony Abbott won and, and also respect the mandate. Um, he seems to be agreeing pretty strongly there with Nick Champion's argument. Uh, That's on the carbon tax, that is. Yes, I understand. Uh, look, as Kevin Rudd said um, in, uh, when he was first elected, Climate change is the great moral challenge of our time. I don't think it ceased to be a great moral challenge of our time. And I think it's a salient lesson that when Labor was seen to be walking away from that in early 2010, I wasn't in Parliament, I was a candidate, that we suffered uh, badly in opinion polls. The public took a bad view of us. I'm quite unequivocal about the fact that direct action is a bad policy. This is a policy that subsidises polluters. This is a policy that will cost households $1,300 a year. This is a policy that's not even costed. This is a policy which doesn't have a single economist or credible scientist backing it. This is a policy where not only members of, uh, of the Conservatives can't even explain it, including Nick Champion's opponent in the election, can't even explain it and articulate it, and yet they expect the Australian public, they expect the Parliament to vote for it. Well, if that's the case, why not do what Nick Champion and, and Richard Miles seem to be alluding to there, and Nick Champion argued it last night, that you, you, if it is a dog of a policy, why not let them implement it, expose it when it's in, when it's in operation? Why should I expose the people of Greenway who elected me to represent them to $1,300 a year? Why should I expose them to extra costs in place of a policy that is already resulting in reduced emissions, a policy that hasn't had the unimaginable consequences that were, were, were uh, predicted on inflation? I'm not going to do the wrong thing by uh, the people But Tony Abbott won the election. He certainly Tony Abbott won the election he and campaigned on this for, for many years, not just six weeks. As, as his own side has shown, it's an absolute fig leaf, according to Malcolm Turnbull. He knows it is. They can't even find one person, one person, to explain what it is, other than planting trees and magic soil. You know, I'm not voting for a policy about magic trees and, you know, plant, planting trees and magic soil. Look, this is, this, I believe in markets. I believe in markets, and this is a market-based mechanism that we have put in place. And I would have thought the Liberal Party would support markets. And sorry, before I go any further, congratulations, Senator Ryan, for being a member of um, the Abbott government. I should have said that at the start. My sincere congratulations. Let's go to Senator Ryan now. Thanks, then you've heard what Michelle Rowland had to say. Also, Richard Miles this morning, who seemed to, well, seems to disagree with Michelle. There is a, a bit of a debate with now within Labor as to what to do on the carbon tax. But it looks like there might, there might be some momentum towards... Uh, at least well, not getting in the way of, uh, of the Coalition's plans on repealing it. Well, well Kieran, Labor introduced a carbon tax when they promised they wouldn't. And now we've got people like Michelle and others saying that they don't want to listen to the people when they voted for its repeal. Um, you know, there was no more central issue to this campaign than Labor's broken promise on the carbon tax and our promise to remove it, to take pressure off household bills and to take pressure off manufacturing jobs and power prices in Australia, all of which the carbon tax makes worse. Now, Nick Champion has blown the whistle here um, and Richard Miles earlier this morning was sort of having a bet each way. I mean, Labor's confronted with a choice. Do they listen to the people and the clear majority that voted for the repeal of the carbon tax or are they going to put their head in the sands and do what they did in the last term which is to try and do exactly what people voted against. Let's move on. I want to look at Kevin Rudd's future now. Uh, Michelle Rowland, is it counterproductive for your colleagues to be calling on him to leave? Does he need the space that Richard Miles suggested he does to make a decision? Kieran, um, I was re-elected on Saturday when everyone, including just about every commentator on this uh, show, said I wouldn't. And uh, I'm incredibly humbled by that. It is uh, not the place for me, a humble backbencher who got re-elected when no one said uh, she was going to, to tell a former Prime Minister of Australia what to do. He can do whatever he likes. Senator Bryan on the Abbott front bench. He's planning, well, working on that as we speak. Apparently, Bronwyn Bishop, uh, according to Phil Khoury's report in the fin Financial Review, is going to be offered the speakership. The question is, will she take it? She still wants the Cabinet, doesn't she? Well, firstly, Kieran, I'm in the Senate. I'm not going to comment on House matters. But, look, Tony Abbott's got down methodically to building a government, to doing important things like uh, establishing contact with the President of Indonesia. Um, these 
these are a matter for the Prime Minister and he's indicated that he'll make an announcement early next week. But all our front benches have made a, a contribution to earning the trust of the Australian people uh, at the last uh, at last weekend at the last election. And you know, I, I know that all my front front bench colleagues and parliamentary colleagues worked very hard. Uh, but this is a matter for the Prime Minister that he'll he's turning his mind to and will make an announcement about next week. I know some senior liberals, um, very senior liberals believe that now's the time to make some tough decisions, to have some renewal early in the, the term. You'd probably support that, wouldn't you, as one of the young up-and-comers? Oh, look, Kieran, I've always been very humbled by the opportunity first to be a member of the parliament and then uh, a junior member of the front bench. And one of the things I think is very important about um, this new administration is the fact that we do have a lot of experienced hands and we do have people who, people like myself, have the opportunity to learn from. Um, the problem with the last Labor government was that you know, so many people wouldn't serve under the Prime Minister of one variety or another. Uh, the fact that we have such a surplus of talent that we have new arrivals like Christian Porter with, an with experience and an opportunity to make a contribution. And so many people who have, already, have, who have made a contribution and who have experience, I think, is a great blend of talent. OK. Now, as uh, Scott Ryan said there, Michelle Rowland, Prime Minister-elect Abbott has had talks on the phone last night with SBY, the Indonesian president, who's not only invited Mr Abbott to attend the APEC summit next month, but also it looks like there'll be earlier uh, talks on border protection over the next week or two with a visit uh, by Mr Abbott um, earlier than the APEC summit itself. So far from conflict, it looks like there's pretty good cooperation in the early stages of the, the incoming Abbott government. Oh, and there, you know, there should be because there's a lot to do. He's going to be very busy uh, with this issue. He's got, uh, you know, got to negotiate the whole turning boats around when SBY um, flatly rejected it last time and wasn't even raised uh, with him when Mr Abbott got to talk to him when he was in opposition. But look, now he's the Prime Minister. He's having that discussion with him. Look, he's got a lot of boats to buy. He's got a three-star general to appoint. So he's going to be very busy in this policy area. Now, let's look to the front bench again, or at least those who would be on your front bench, Senator Ryan, Arthur Sinodinas. Will he um, survive in the Senate? It looks like it's going to be close there in New South Wales. And also, Sophie Mirabella, what's the latest you're hearing in the seat of Indi? Uh, while there's uh, a few thousand votes to count today, I think five or six thousand, uh, mainly postals and provisional votes, uh, and Sophie Mirabella is a few hundred votes behind. Um, the truth is that you know what we saw in Indi was an extraordinary uh, con uh, campaign by outsiders. Uh, there were unions up there handing out uh, leaflets on election day. Get up was involved in the campaign and had paid advertisements and there were people bust in from Melbourne. So it's a close seat but I know the locals are uh, uh, optimistic that they'll be able to claw that back. And what about your colleague in the Senate, Senator Sinodinas? Uh, look, my, I'm not as aware of what's happening in New South Wales. I have had a quick look uh, and I know in New South Wales, while they think it's close, close uh, Arthur they are confident Arthur will get re-elected. Uh, importantly, of course, the Senate doesn't change until 1 July next year, and so um, Arthur would remain a senator until, at the very least, June 30 next year, regardless of the result. But New South Wales Liberals are quite, uh, quietly confident that Arthur will be re-elected. And finally, Michelle Rowland, you did buck the trend in New South Wales and indeed nationally. How much do you put, down, uh, put that down to the problems of your opponent, James Diaz? Well, I'd like to remind you, Kieran, that on the day uh, my opponent was at a dollar ten, and I had completely blown out. And I was doing a lot of live-to-air crosses on the day with uh, reporters telling me you know, Tony Abbott is campaigning in the seats of Kingsford Smith and Barton with uh, much higher margins than myself. Uh, when you're on a margin of 0.88 per cent, you need to make sure that you work for three years. And the campaign. Um, that we ran okay. in Greenway with the support of you know, so many volunteers was predicated on the basis of me being an effective local member for three years. So you know, I put it down, uh, you know, I, I'm so humbled and I'm so grateful to the people of Greenway um, for re-electing me um, against everything that not only the odds but all the pundits said. Michelle uh, Rowland, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations thank you, on that and also Scott Ryan uh, with the election of the Coalition. Thanks very much. Both will take a quick break on AM Agenda. When we return, I will get the latest on those close vote counts with the Electoral Commission.